Hi, this is your 3.7 to 3.10 screencast, and I hope everything's going well for you. And just a reminder that you know throughout this whole process, communication is very important. And I know you're getting lots of information thrown at you, especially you know with changes in the AP testing and everything. But if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please uh, feel free to email me. 3.7 is on solutions and mixtures. The learning objective here is to calculate the number of solute particles, volume, or molarity of solutions. And the essential knowledge is uh, basically it's about molarity. Molarity, and the equation is right here, and this equation is on, it's on your equation sheet. Its molarity is equal to moles of solute per liter of solution. And you want to be able to solve for any one of these variables. And uh, a solution is a homogeneous mixture. That means it's uh, evenly mixed all the way through. Um, generally, the solutions we talk about are a solid dissolved in water, but a, a solution could be anything that's evenly mixed. It could be alloys are solutions. It could be um, two different liquids mixed together. But generally, what we deal with is a solid dissolved in a liquid, like salt water is a good example. Next is 3.8, representations of solutions. And the learning objective is using particulate models for mixtures. And you want to be able to represent interactions between components, or B, represent concentrations of components. And the essential knowledge is just being able to draw particle drawings uh, for what's going on in a solution. Over here, there's a couple of different particle drawings, just some simple ones. But this is kind of depicting the different concentrations. So you have the, the solution A and solution C, um, they have the same volume. This has more dissolved components, so this would have a greater molarity. So you just want to say if there's more particles in, in a particular volume, you're going to have a higher concentration. So that's how you represent concentration, just, just by showing the, the number of particles. As far as interactions go, um, generally when you're showing that the different interactions are how they moving, how are the particles moving, or what forces are, are they, they um, what, what, what kind of forces do they have within the mixture. So if you're talking about uh, the speed of a particle, generally the length of the arrow is how we depict the speed. So a longer arrow means that they're moving faster. If you're talking about a force that's being applied, uh, we show that with arrows also, but usually what you do is you, if you have a thicker arrow, like this, I know it's a terrible drawing, but if you have a thicker arrow like that, it means that's a stronger force. So longer arrow means a, a faster moving particle. Thicker arrow, if you're talking about forces, that means a stronger force. Then you have 3.9 separations of solutions and mixtures chromatography. So the learning objective is explain the relationship between the solubility of ionic and molecular compounds in aqueous and non-aqueous solvents and the intermolecular attractions between the particles. So two different separation techniques that you want to know about, chromatography and distillation. So this is a drawing of, of or a picture of chromatography. Uh, and we did a lab on this a, a while ago. But what you do is you take um, an ink spot, which is a mixture of different liquids, and you, you take a strip of chromatography paper, which we just use filter paper, and you put the very edge into the water. And then what happens is over time, the water will creep up the paper. And the different colors of ink that are in that, that black ink will separate as the water moves up. So um, for chromatography, in general, there, there's two parts. There's always a mobile phase and a stationary phase. So in this case, the, the paper is your stationary phase, and the mobile phase is the water. So and the reason that these, um, these different colors will separate, it's based on, on their uh, the concept of being polar or nonpolar. So chromatography, it's, it's always, it's just looking at how polar some particle is. So it's polar or nonpolar. And 
it's based on the character of the mobile phase. In this case, the mobile phase is water. Water is a polar molecule. So the, the colors that are more polar will move more with the water. So in this case, you would say, well, which of these colors that's in the solution of the, the ink is the most polar? You would say yellow is the most polar because it moves the most with the polar solvent. And it looks like this color down there, like maybe that purple color, would be the least polar of the, the different colors that are in that, that ink spot. So chromatography is based on, on the, the, how polar or nonpolar the substance is. And the, the amount that you, um, what, what you look at is how far does the ink go relative to the solvent front. So the solvent front is how far up the water climbs in this case. So if you're looking at um, like this orange color, for example, you would measure how far the orange dot moved and you would divide that by how far the water moved. And that's a characteristic for that color right there. All right. Now, if you have a, a non-polar solvent like hexane or something like that, then the the more non-polar part of the mixture will move more and the more polar part will move less so it's all comp you're comparing the 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 colors in this ink to the solvent that's moving up the paper okay next you have uh, distillation and distillation is just separating uh, two different liquids two or more different liquids based on their boiling point point. and boiling point it's all relative to intermolecular forces so if you have stronger intermolecular forces holding the liquid together it takes more energy to break it apart and you have higher boiling points so distillation is, is relative to intermolecular forces then you have 3.10 is on solubility and the learning objective is explain the relationship between the solubility of ionic and molecular compounds in aqueous and non-aqueous solvents and the intermolecular interactions between particles. And the essential knowledge here is basically just boils down to this, like dissolves like. And this is the concept that things that are polar, so polar and, not, polar, and polar will mix together, non-polar and nonpolar will mix together. But if you have polar and nonpolar, like water and oil, those two things are, uh, they don't mix together. The, the term that's used is miscible. That's M-I-S-C-I-B-L-E for things that mix together and then with polar and nonpolar, that would be immiscible. And that's all for today. Have a good day. Bye.